friends and family from around the world this is mike with daily events worldwide and we are on october 26th 2024 welcome to another surviving day on the planet welcome to the daily do starting out here looking at our sun the last 48 hours as it's produced two x-class solar flares the first one i reported the other day but now we've seen a yet another minor x-class solar flare it was an x 2.0 i think i do believe but look at it there left bottom left hand side having a look at the last 48 hours incoming you can see both solar flares and as well the plasma filaments attached to the sunspot regions wap that did produce a very large coronal mass ejection set to give us a glancing blow just like the last one looking at the last 48 hours outgoing plasma filament there dancing across the surface from sunspot region to another a lot of activity on our sun for the past two days having a look here pointing out all of this activity big plasma filament swirling around there another one here in between the sunspot regions and then x-class solar flare lots of plasma associated and a lot of power as you can see, those plasma arcs spiraling and almost creating a tsunami across the sun. Get a closer look here at this X-Class Solar Flare. Thank you so much for tuning in right now. If you're watching and you're enjoying these images, the information shared, give a thumbs up and share today. Let's get this channel to 100K. Sharing imagery here, this is multi-spectrum this is where we can see coronal hole regions and as well the whole coronasphere in action, heliosphere. Amazing images here brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. Coronal holes turning away and another one turning in, in the northern region. Closer look here. Watch this big plasma tornado turning into view there. And it's connected to something else, another sunspot region moving in. There are 11 sunspots, 11 sunspots right now, Earth-facing positions. So stay aware and prepared, my friends and family. Amazing times to be alive. I'm able and I'm grateful that I'm able to share all these images and information with you. All of these images provided by Solar Dynamics Observatory mixed with daily events worldwide. We've seen two X-class solar flares the past 48 hours. Did report on the last one. But now we've got another one to deal with. And 11 sunspot regions. Definitely watching all this activity turning in. Look at, we've got like six black holes turning into an Earth-facing position right now. And look at that fast forming one in the top screen. Wow, that is amazing. Current space weather conditions, we are under R3, strong radio blackouts from this long duration. Yet again, solar flare, solar winds are coming in at 480 kilometers per second. That is from our most recent CME. We have a 70% chance of R1 or R2 and as well, minor geomagnetic instability. Solar X-ray fluxes, you can see here, long duration, X-class solar flare. Two of them the past two days, solar proton flux is now reaching up into the S1 range. Geomagnetic activity, sending a KP3. Having a look here at the DRAP absorption map, showing the highest frequency areas affected by these most recent, or by the most recent X-class solar flare. And there's the coronal mass ejection from two days ago solar flare. This has not been updated yet. The Space Weather Prediction Center has not introduced the new CME. 
This boss base prediction spiral does have it. This was the most recent one, taking off on the backside of the sun, and then when I refreshed, showing a large coronal mass ejection, looking to give Earth a glancing blow, 28th into the 29th. So definite geomagnetic activity affecting Earth over the next four days. Heads up, we could see more activity from these sunspot regions turning in. Looking at LASCO 3 and 2, this is the broad spectrum. We're able to see all of the space weather and cosmic energies coming our way from the most recent coronal mass ejection. There's the one from two days ago. And just amazing images here of the most recent coronal mass ejection. Big arc taken off. Woo! That's a full halo CME, folks. Stay prepped. Our sun is about to do something really funky in solar cycle 25, and we could be in front of it when it does it. It's all about this Earth-facing activity. Boom! That is a huge coronal mass ejection. Lucky not directly Earth-facing. And it was a fast-moving CME as well. Big explosion from a sunspot region turning into view, and it's going to be playing with Earth over the next seven days. Amazing. Thanks again for watching. If you're enjoying these images, thumbs up. Get in the comments section. Give a timestamp on the comment section. Let me know your favorite part. Let's have a look at earthquakes now. The last 24 hours as things are picking up still. Gorontolo, BC, or Indonesia. Pretty deep earthquake there. And as well, Fiji region, Haifo, and Japan, Bonin Islands region. The trifecta, three very deep re uh, regional earthquakes for the West Pacific Ring of Fire. 5.2 earthquake here, French Southern Territories. That is towards the Heard Volcano, which I've been talking about for the last week or so, as there's increased sulfur dioxide emissions being forecast in the southern hemisphere from God knows where. Most likely the herd volcano. Ecuador and into Mexico, minor activity 4.7 ranging to 4.0. Cruz Bay, 3.7 earthquake there and piling up through Puerto Rico. El Moro, Colorado reporting a 3.4 and earthquakes are still popping off. Petrolia, California and up into the Juan de Fuca Plate. Heads up, this is an earthquake warning, folks, for North America and into Alaska. USGS reporting 222 the last 24 hours, but almost 2,000 the last seven days. All of the orange and reds being the most recent. Look at all this activity up into the Pacific Northwest and across California. Stovepipe wells here started with a 4.5 yesterday, swarming up to about 200 earthquakes through the region, all around Yellowstone and moving north-northwest towards Vancouver and BC. Look at that minor activity even south of Texada Island and Grand Prairie, Canada. That's right, this is a fracking region, most likely fracking earthquake, but it is right along a river line, as you can see. So who knows? But this is a heavily fracked region of Alberta. Grand Prairie reporting an earthquake. Look at this. Even Susanville just recently, 3.6. So earthquakes are still piling up all across California and up into the Pacific Northwest. Having a look at the last seven days on the globe for shakers and movers. Listen to the pulse of our planet. Largest being a 6.2 that hit Mexico a few days ago. We've had some pretty deep earthquakes all across the Philippines Plate and Southwest Pacific Plate. Expecting something big here up into Alaska or Russia or maybe even the Central Pacific Plate. Heads up, everybody. It's all about staying aware and prepared. Now let's have a look at our sulfur dioxide emissions forecast. Big plume moving through Ontario right now. Not the greatest air quality out there. 
Big. SO2 Producers. Kamchatka, Aleutian Islands, and Mexico. Overlooking Southeast Asia and Europe and Africa. Big plume coming out of Mount Etna and as well north of Siberia. Big dark plume coming out of Mexico. That must have been a pretty big eruption. And then look at this in the southern hemisphere. Coming out of the South Pacific Ocean and scooting across South America and into the South Sandwich Islands right now. Big plume of SO2. Not really sure where this is coming from. But we do have an active and erupting 67 volcanoes across the planet. Now let's have a look at world weather. As we've got multiple systems affecting North America this week, mostly Canada. Large low pressure system, atmospheric river of moisture to continue for BC, mostly Alaska though. And as well, all of these low pressure systems are going to be moving northward. High pressure ridge moving in for most of the week, eastern side. But long range forecast by November 1st, we do have some winter storms forming for central Canada and the border with the states. Overlooking Europe, low pressure system grinding through the Mediterranean and as well winter storms developing for north, northeast Europe, Finland, Norway. Looking through the Mediterranean, you could see some severe weather and some snow in the higher elevations. Things are really starting to cool off in the northern hemisphere, that's for sure, as we are embarking on winter 2025. Low pressure system affecting South Africa this week. Watch for extreme weather and as well the Philippines. Typhoon moving up into lower parts of Japan for the long range forecast. Look at this in a closer view as we've got multiple systems in play here. One grinding into Thailand, but watch as it swings back towards the Philippines. And then invest area here will be a category three or four typhoon by the time it reaches South Japan. So heads up Japan, you've got a super typhoon on its way, most likely a four or five. We'll leave you here looking at the North Pacific forecast as we've got big low pressure systems affecting British Columbia, Washington and Oregon, but high pressure ridge is still dominating all across the Southwest United States. And as well, Southeast Pacific Ocean. Look at the size of that low pressure system and long range forecast. Boys and girls, oh, here we go. We're ready. This is why they de developed Agenda 21, Agenda 2030. You've seen the movie The Day After Tomorrow. These systems are huge and they're not stopping. Velocity size strength much love everybody stay aware and prepared stay young and have fun and get your daily do bye bye now if you enjoyed today's video please hit that like button subscribe share with your friends and family from across the world